y'all. Y'all see the gear right now. Big day, Howie Roseman. Hey, he moving different right now, man. Big signings today. Bryce Huff, come on down the turnpike. Saquon Barkley, come on down the turnpike. It's like we're getting everybody from the New York teams right now. Bryce Huff from the Jets. Saquon Barkley from the Giants. You kill two birds with one stone. You get a three-down running back while also taking away a key piece from your division rival in the Giants. And then, look, we still got a lot of cap space left. We made a couple other signings, right? We re-signed Landon Dickerson. I mean, you, you have a you have um, Josh Sweat and obviously Hassan Reddick on the board on the trade block. So there's a lot of moving pieces here. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before you before we talk about it, though, make sure you go to the YouTube channel. This is the live stream on Facebook. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel and go ahead and like, subscribe to the channel. Click the notif notification bell so you know every time I'm dropping something. And let's go ahead and talk about it. So Saquon Barkley, that's the big move today, the big splash move. Because the Eagles, they tried to resign DeAndre Swift. They gave him an offer. And look, I say to every guy that's playing in the NFL, get your money. He waited it out. It worked out for him. He ended up going to the Chicago Bears three years for $24 million, I believe. That's an average of $8 million a year. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how much of that is guaranteed, but you know he got his money, and he's going to get a chance to play more. And I know that he had to have been frustrated by the lack of touches that he was getting, especially in the passing game. So, you know, look, salute to him. I loved him while I was here, and I wish him nothing but the best. But you know, welcome home to Saquon. You know, Penn State alums, Penn State's finest. He signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. For three years, $37 million, I believe $26 million guaranteed, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go ahead and look at this real quick. Yep, $26 million fully guaranteed, and three years, $37.75 million as reported by Adam Schefter and then Jeff McLean, um, you know, Eagles beat writer. And the deal is worth up to $46.75 million potentially with incentives. So, hey, you know, they went ahead and gave him the money. They saw somebody they liked, and they went out and got him. So, let's go ahead and look at Saquon Barkley. You know, this is per PFF. PFF grade in 2023, 70.2. 70, 70, 70. Ooh, excuse me. Too excited. Uh, that ranked 35th out of 59 running backs. His um, wins above replacement stat, that means compared to the the average running back how many wins how many more wins do you earn your team compared to the average running back in the league and his war was 0.12 that's 20th i would assume out of 59 or what have you um fit um combined with need grade they gave him a b plus value grade they gave it a b because they're, they're probably alluding to the fact that they overpaid for him slightly which which they did but you know, scared money don't make money. Um, and then you look at the projected contract. Um, three years, $36 million, $12 million a year, $18.5 million total guaranteed. And here's the reason. Like, they're giving him about $12.583 million per year on average right now. But considering that the salary cap went up, that deal is going to be a bargain in one to two years. So uh, I think a very shrewd move by... Howie Roseman here, and here's the synopsis from PFF. So they say, this is a shocker. The Philadelphia Eagles not only spend at the top of the market for a running back here, but they also poach a former number two overall pick of the New York Giants. There's probably an element to the running back market today that suggests that teams may finally feel we've hit the inflection point of the market, contraction for the position, but there also may not be a running back selected in the top 50 draft picks based on these contracts. So what they're pretty much saying there is we might have hit a point where I don't know if we necessarily go higher than that in terms of a yearly average for what they're going to make per year for the top running backs. But the running back class is weak. So that's affecting why these guys are getting so much money. I.e. Deion, uh, DeAndre Swift, he got about $8 million a year. Excuse me, Saquon Barkley, he's getting $12.583 million a year. Josh Jacobs, 
from my my um Las Vegas Raiders is my other team. He got paid handsomely by the Packers, I believe. Yeah, I believe by the Green Bay Packers who just cut Aaron Jones. So, you know, a lot of big moves. These guys all got paid. They waited it out. They were patient and they got their money. And, you know, hats off to them. I mean, I'm not going to knock nobody getting their money. But this market is is there for, for people to get scooped up. And we're seeing a lot of big splashes for this reason, along with the salary cap being higher. So let's look a little bit further into this description here and some of the stats, the reactions to this move. And here here's what they're saying. The end of the PFF description, Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley, who <laughs> squat a combined 1,200 pounds, which is crazy, right? Will be a dynamic duo in the zone read game, and Barkley can be a pass catch catching weapon, which Philadelphia could stand to add as well as an improved pass blocker. And they did not have a reliable pass blocker last year, or really for a while. I mean, Miles Sanders was solid at it, but... He wasn't the pass blocker that a Brian Westbrook was or a Shady McCoy was or a Saquon Barkley is. So that is going to be a huge upgrade there as well. Uh, DeAndre Swift was solid at it, but again, Saquon Barkley, he can, you don't have to worry about a free rusher coming through and getting to Jalen Hurts as consistently as they were with Saquon back there picking up blocks. Now let's go ahead and look at uh, some of the other news and notes on this thing. So you look at the, the Eagles' reasoning, according to Jeff McClain, for why they signed Saquon Barkley. Because you have, you have to wonder, and you look at Howie Roseman's track record, when is when's the last time he actually spent significant money on that position? Don't worry, I'll wait. You look at how they let Miles Sanders go last year and went with a running back by committee approach, bringing in DeAndre Swift on a cheap deal, and... He was producing, and maybe part of them not giving him the ball as much was, I, I, I would hope they're not trying to sabotage him. I, I would assume not, but they knew he was going to get paid, and they were never going to be able to keep him unless they were going to shut out the money, which it seemed like they were ready to do. He showed plenty last year. But, you know, when's the last time outside of them trying to give DeAndre Swift and Saquon Barkley big-time money that they spend money on the position? A long time i.e. Shady McCoy, way back when, with Chip Kelly before his dumb ass traded him. Um, but they went out and spent the money, and this is their reasoning, according to Jeff McClain. And this makes sense, right? The Eagles, they believe that he's worth it, and he'll be a the three-down back they haven't had since LeSean McCoy. Barkley can run, catch, and block, which I just said, and the Eagles didn't have that at running back. And you look at Saquon Barkley, the, the issue with him has always been his availability, not his ability. It's his availability, right? You have ability and then you add avail on the front. That's always been the issue with Saquon Barkley. And you look at, he had the ACL tear in 2020, and he came back from that really strong, you know, s similar to the way that... Um, Adrian Peterson did. I mean, he didn't have a 2,000-yard season, but he came back strong as shit, right? Um, and then, you know, 2022, he had 1,300 yards. And then 2023, last year, he had the grade two ankle sprain early in the year, but he came back, played through it, and he still almost had 1,000 yards in 14 games started. And even with um, the 962 yards and six touchdowns on the ground that he had, he only averaged 3.9 yards per carry. But he had 60 targets for 41 receptions. So he, he, he's always hella active. He's always active. And then you combine that with the fact that he ran behind the third worst offensive line in football as per PFF. And now he's switching over to the third best offensive line in the NFL, according to PFF. So what gives me optimism is the fact that, one, he's, he's healthy. As, as far as we know. Two, he hasn't had a whole lot of carries in his career. It's not the same scenario as what we had with DeMarco Murray when Chip Kelly brought him, him in, right? The year before, the Dallas Cowboys had run him into the ground. They gave him 300 plus carries, and they might have given him 300 plus carries a year before that too. They ran him into the ground knowing that they weren't gonna resign him. So they got everything they thought they could get out of him before they let him go. And it showed when he came to the Eagles. 
I mean, they didn't utilize him properly, obviously, that, and that was part of it. But the other part was he had been worn down those two years prior in Dallas. But you go ahead and look at Saquon Barkley's carries each year. First year, rookie year, 261 carries, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. He had 121 targets with 91 receptions. Second year, 217 carries. That's not an extreme amount of carries. And he played in 13 games. 2020, tore the ACL. 2021, came back and they eased him back in. He had 162 carries in 2021. 295 carries in 2022 as they ramped him up again, right? And in 2023, he had the ankle sprain and he still came back and played and had 247 carries. So you look at where he's at. He's, uh, I believe, 28. Uh, how old is Saquon Barkley? Barkley. Don't know, but he's still very fairly young. I think he's 27 or 28. He's still right in the prime of, of his career. And if he's healthy, we got a superstar. If he's not healthy, then you see a slow decline. I don't think that's the case, but we will see. He's not to that 2,000 carry mark. And that's typically the mark where you see running backs start to decline. And that's the mark where we saw DeMarco Murray start to decline as well. He got to that 2,000 carry mark, okay? Now, that's the premise here. And before I go over to the comments, I want to make a quick note of you also have to consider that being the workhorse, as well as being behind a piss-poor offensive line, he also had no passing game. Look at the quarterback. Um, Allen, whatever, man. I, I don't... D D Daniel... Daniel Jones, like he's he's so bad that I just it's hard for me to remember his name. Thank you. Somebody corrected me. Shout out Craig Lynch. He's twenty seven. You had Daniel Jones at quarterback, who, okay, like he trips. <laughs> he is what he is. And then you have the wide receivers. You have Darius Slayton, who never panned out as a first round pick. Then you had uh, Wondell Robinson, I believe. He's a up and coming wide receiver who was a rookie last year. He did okay, but he's a rookie. The only person you had was Darren Waller, my Raider alumni, and he had the um the nerve issues in his leg, right? He was in and out. I know because he was on my fantasy team. He gave me a good solid six or seven weeks, and then boom, he's on the IR for a while. So they really didn't have anything in that passing game, along with a piss-poor offensive line, and then everything's on his shoulders, all right? So we're going to find out how much it is him being injury prone versus him being a fresh running back that had to carry the whole damn team with a piss poor offensive line and a, a piece of crap passing game. All right, with that, let me go over to the comments and see what people were saying because it's blowing up over here. All right, comments, comments, comments. Um, Ryan says, remember, remember how successful Zeke was under Kellen Moore? Excuse me. Imagine what Barkley is going to do. Very good point, my friend, and we're going to get into that. Uh, Joel, shout out to you, 100. You already know what time it is, bro. And then uh, Craig Lynch, you know, you're welcome to the live stream as always. You know what I mean? He says, finally got an unpredictable offense with Barkley. Absolutely. He's going to be healthy because we're going to use him right. And I'm going to go into a point uh, off, off of what you just said. We got to talk about Huff, too. I'm going to talk about him next. You already know. Crazy good DN. From the Jets, Bro Saquon gonna, gonna gonna go off. Yes, he will. Um, to your point, I want to see them get a veteran running back. And you look at Zeke under Kellen Moore, and that's it's ironic you said that, Ryan, because I wouldn't mind them bringing Zeke or somebody of his ilk, a vet, a veteran like him, in for one and a half, two million dollars, similar to the way they brought in LeGarrette Blunt during the Super Bowl run, just to be able to have somebody who's reliable that can spell Saquon Barkley and allow him to always be fresh. And Zeke, while he doesn't have the lateral movement anymore, he can for sure go north and south. He can for sure still pick up a blitz very well, which would be another running back in your arsenal that you would be able to keep on the field when Saquon's out that can pick up the blitz. And then you'd be able to in my opinion, use kind of Gainwell and Boston Scott and use them like a Swiss Army knife. Maybe put them in a slot here. Maybe have them in the backfield coming out for the pass while 
while um, Zeke stays in to pass, pass block or take a handoff. Like, you have a lot of different options. But get somebody of that ilk. Get a veteran that has experience, has a little bulk to him that can uh, do some of the things that you need in this offense. All right? And then, lastly, I want to talk about Saquon Barkley and the... <laughs> Saquon Barkley and the back and forth he's been having with freaking Tiki Barber, okay? <laughs> and this this is the funniest thing, okay? Because Tiki Barber, I posted up on my Instagram story, I think about three or four days ago. Tiki Barber said, if he goes to that team in Philadelphia, I will disown him. I will never look at him the same, and I, I, I just, I'm done with him, right? And guess what happened? <laughs> Tiki Barber came out today and said, I'm done with him. I washed my hands of him. He is no longer a giant. We don't want to hear about him anymore. And I find that very funny. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you what Saquon said back to him and why it's a little bit hypocritical that Tiki Barber is saying what he's saying. All right. Saquon Barkley's response to that was simply this. Okay. He said, Tiki Barber, you've been a hater since I got to New York, and all the dead to me talk, don't smile on my face when I see when you see me. Like it's on sight. And then he said two minutes later, yup, you're the prime example of loyalty to a team. I got the deal I wanted. I secured more guaranteed money, which wasn't given to me before. So if fans, if fans are going to hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates and always had theirs. And that's a fact because last time I checked, they didn't even give him a damn offer before he went into free agency. So I'm not trying to hear none of this stuff about loyalty and how much they cared. No, they were like, we're not going to give you the money and you find a better deal. And if you don't find one, come on back to us with your tail between your legs, between your legs. And guess what happened? He got a better deal. And now not only did he get a better deal, he's down here in Philly with this offense. Come on now. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about Mr. Barber. You know, if you're listening to this, you know, it is what it is. Um, I call it like I see it. I call it spade a spade. But um, last time I checked, didn't you retire in, in 2006 at the height of your career? You came out off the uh, Super Bowl win, the first one in the the new millennia with Eli Manning and, and uh, Platsko Burrs when you defeated the, uh, the great Patriot dynasty, right? You beat the Patriots twice, right? You beat them once. You got that ring. And then instead of staying there when your team needed you, you quit out of nowhere, left them confused, and then said some less than, than kind things on the way out and alienated your team and that whole organization. But should you want to talk about Saquon Barkley, Barkley not being loyal to a, a, a team that tried to put the whole team on his back and then didn't want to pay him as if they didn't ask him to be Superman with the cape on? Cut it out, G. Did, it, did, I, did I miss anything there? I don't think I did. All right, it, craziness, craziness, man, craziness. I'm looking over the comments here. Yo, uh, Naeem, man, keep going. You already know I am, man. Like, look, I'm cooking right now. I call it like I see it, and last time I checked, um, Saquon Barkley did everything within his power to help that god-awful organization. You know, please forgive me, God, for evoking your name there, but um, I, I, I guess I evoked it because a lot of times football goes beyond – just the field, what goes on in the field. These teams, specifically the Eagles, the Giants, they, they go be they go into the community. They go beyond the football field. So when you have guys that give their heart and their soul to their teams on and off the field and they leave, it it affects the community as well. We saw the same thing when LaShawn McCoy got traded or when Zach Ertz left or when Kelsey retired, right? the impact they have off the field. The, the fans up there, they, they know what Saquon brought to that team. And that's why a lot of them are upset that he left. And and probably more upset that the Giants didn't do him justice um, in offering him good money to keep him there. So you can't blame the player. So that's my thoughts on that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Eagles fans, Giants fans, NFL football fans, I don't really care. Leave your thoughts in the comments below what you think about the move today and everything surrounding it, the reactions behind it and all that stuff. Let me know. That being said, that's not the only move that Howie made. Howie on Demon Town right now, man. Because like you just asked, asking you shall receive, Craig. Um, they picked up another player from New York, but not the Giants. You know who they got? 
price tough. Funny thing, I woke up this morning and I was looking at the trade rumor mill and I saw Bryce Huff popping up left and right connected to the Eagles. So I went ahead and I looked at some highlights. And first off, the boy's a monster. And then second off, I remember I remember the game we played last year against the Jets. And he had one, if not two sacks on Jalen Hurts. He had one when he, where he got past Jordan Mailata. And then he had one where he blew past uh, Jack Driscoll. I mean, he he was <laughs> the the he he's slightly undersized, but he's just he's like Sonic the Hedgehog hog off that edge. That dude got a, a wicked ass first step, man, and he just like a little pit bull, not not quite as big as not quite. Mm, I guess you could call him like like Hugh Douglas 2.0, but he's not as heavy as Hugh Douglas was. But he he's of the same ilk, and I hope that the that move turns out the same way as it did when we brought Hugh Douglas here. Bringing a pass rusher from the Jets that just you you're you're going after the potential, right? He he had the his he hasn't been on the field because he's not a he doesn't grade out well against the run. But as a pass rusher, he is he graded eighth in the NFL last year. He's coming off ten sacks last year, and he gets pressure like you don't believe. So I think it's an excellent pickup. And let's go into PFFs breakdown on what he brings as the player okay so the eagles they signed bryce huff, huff edge rusher 2023 pff grade 79.7 graded out as 24th out of 112 edge rushers his win over replace uh, above replacements grade was 0.21 which ranked 20th for that position similar to saquon um and that you have to know that includes the the run grade as well so it's, it's lower than it would be uh, the fit uh, need grade is an A, and the value grade is an A minus. Because mind you, they signed him for a contract for three years, fifty one point one million dollars, which is an average of seventeen point three three million dollars per year, and thirty four point uh, thirty four million dollars total guaranteed. So you pretty much have two of those years guaranteed. And then the PFF. Uh, projected contract would be three years, fifty million dollars, sixteen point six seven million dollars per year, thirty five million dollars total guaranteed. So this is textbook Harry Roseman on display. They go on to say Eagles edge rushers, edge defenders Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat are the subjects of trade talks as they enter the final years of their respective contracts. And Philadelphia could trade one or both with an in-house replacement at the ready. Huff is as good a pure pass rusher off the edge as any player in the league. Let that sink in. He is as good a pure pass rusher off the edge as any player in the league. And what do they need help with? That damn pass rush. They they fell off from that historic year they had with 80 plus sacks. And they really fell back down to earth. So what better way to rectify that situation than to bring in one of the top pure pass rushers in the league? And the Eagles have always deployed the platoon style approach that should fit his style of play the best. And there's a reason why they resigned Brandon Graham. Okay. And they had that in mind. And then secondly, they may or may not end up trading Hassan Reddick or Josh Sweat. I, I see them trading one of them for sure, but they might not trade two of them. They might keep the other one around. Like if they don't get a deal they like, well, guess what? They're going to let them play it out. And then if we're able to resign them after next year, we do. If we don't, it is what it is. And you'll have flexibility because guess what? Um, Brandon Graham is only one year deal. If he decides to retire next year, well, guess what? All that money that was going to him, well, that can go to re-signing Josh Sweat or Hassan Reddick, who's ever, whoever is left, if they decide to go down that route. So they have a lot of flexibility and they still have more money to spend. So look, another great move. They addressed um, one of the, the sore spots from the defense. Let me know what you guys think about that one. And then let's go ahead and get into some of the other moves that they made or tried to make earlier today. And let's look at the one move I wish they, they were able to get him, but they weren't able to. Xavier McKinney from the Giants. They tried to poach two Giants players. Xavier McKinney being the safety. He had a great year last year. He was actually on the Eagles radar, I, I believe, three or four years ago in the draft. We just didn't end up getting him. But look... Look, he, he ended up going to the Green Bay Packers. He got a four-year deal, said to be worth about $68 million. 
and multiple reports indicated the Eagles were serious bidders for his services. There was also thought that Philly might especially appeal to him due to his friendship with Jalen Hurts. Um, but, you know, it is what it is that fell through. So we'll see what their next move is. But you do know, you do know, C.J. Gardner-Johnson is out there. And he has quite a, a decision to make because he has a chance to play on two potential Super Bowl caliber teams. He could stay in Detroit and run it back with them because they're on the rise. Or he can come back to Philly and rejoin our squad who is back on the rise with the moves that we're making. So that's that's a name to keep in mind, and I will be keeping track of him. I'll, I'll update you guys on that, but I would be happy if he came back. And whatever was said, all, all will be forgiven if you bring a ring here. We really won't care, all right? And you won't care about that point either if we get a ring. So let me know what you guys think about that. And then lastly, the Eagles went out and made a depth signing. They signed a linebacker, okay? A linebacker, ooh. Zach Bond. Zach Bound, Zach, Zach Bond. Hopefully, I'm not saying it too wrong. Um, but he uh, signed a one-year deal with the Eagles. He was drafted by the Saints in 2020. He played 62 games, and he was mostly a special teams player. But he's in in um, I believe he's an on-ball. I think he's an on-ball linebacker. Um, I believe he's an on-ball uh, on-ball linebacker. So he's pretty much a pass rusher, like an edge rusher. So it's, it's a nice depth move. I, I like the, the signing, but they still have to address the position with an off-ball linebacker because right now you have N'Kobe Dean, which I, I believe he can be your second off-ball linebacker, but you need one more that's going to be more consistent in terms of his availability. So I would be fine with them bringing back Shaq Leonard if he wanted to come back and then going to signing one other guy so that you could simply put N'Kobe Dean in as a nickel off-ball linebacker, keep him healthy, play to his strengths, allow him to fly around and really be a, a, a menace in coverage. Like, let him be a demon in coverage and keep him healthy. So, overall, I think a very, very good day for the Eagles. Big splash signings with Saquon Barkley as well as um, Bryce Huff. And then a good depth signing with Zach Bound. And then lastly, let me go ahead and switch over to my Raiders real quick. Two big signings. Well, actually, one big signing and then another interesting signing. So let me go ahead and here and open my tab up here, um, because this the first signing was the D tackle out of from the Dolphins, Christian. I always get his name wrong. Uh, Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins. Yep, Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle from the Miami Dolphins, and they gave him some money, boy. Four years, $110 million. Crazy, bro. <laughs> Crazy. And it's a deal. Um, and Dolphins publisher, Alan uh, Pupart, he says the Dolphins would have been unable to agree um, on if they were to sign other players in, in 2024. They weren't going to be able to give him the money, okay? It is what it is. He is one of the best D tackles in football, in my opinion. You know, Chris Jones, he's a better pass rusher, but... Christian Wilkins is a better overall D tackle, especially against the run. And that's something the Raiders, we have, listen, we haven't been able to stop squat up the middle the past, th th this whole millennia, I think. Let's just, let's just go with that. <laughs> since, since 2000, let's just start with 2000. We haven't been able to stop a damn thing running up the middle since 2000. We finally got a freaking D tackle that's worth a damn. And you you pair him up with Max Crosby. And then you got Tyrell on the other end. I need him to step up. You know, our number seven overall draft pick from last year. Step step it up. But and I think he can, and I think he will. Now now we, we're working with something, okay? Because before they were running up the middle like it was they were parting the red seat like Moses. We just couldn't stop. Couldn't stop a nosebleed, dude. All right, so that, that was a great signing. I, I wish they could have kept Josh Jacobs, but I know they weren't going to pay him. Um, so, which is why I want the Eagles to get him. I wanted Josh Jacobs, but, you know, am I going to complain about Saquon Barkley, a healthy Saquon Barkley? No. Either one, a healthy Saquon Barkley or a healthy Josh Jacobs, you can't go wrong with either one. So, I'm good. <laughs> we're good with that. Now, I want to know what we're going to do at the running back position for the Raiders. Are we going to go to free agency? 
You know, Derrick Henry's still out there. Are we going to go to the draft? What say you, Raider Nation? What do you think? Okay, hold on for a second. I'll be right back. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Hold on. Y'all thought I forgot. You thought I forgot. Now I didn't forget. We here. What say you, Raider Nation? Are we going to get a running back in the draft? Or are we going to get uh, a Derrick Henry? Somebody of his ilk out in free agency. I want to know. Okay? But I love the signing there. And then secondly, <laughs> we went ahead and got a former Eagle. All right? And and, and Eagle Nation, you all know who did. We all know who this is. Come on, man. You know, Top Gun, Tom Cruise. We went ahead and got Gardner Minshew, dude. Gardner Minshew, Minshew is a Las Vegas Raider, okay? They gave him two years, $25 million with $15 million guaranteed. So they're giving him pretty much a one-year deal, a one-year approval deal um, to figure out um, whether he can be somebody that stays longer or not. All right? Because he had a pretty... <laughs> Pretty solid year last year with the Colts. You know, Anthony Richardson went down. And Gardner Minshew, he came on and he helped them make that push to the playoffs, man. I mean, they fell short. I get it. But, man, if he didn't make that a, an exciting run for a team that probably thought they were dead in the water after Anthony Richardson went down. Because he was having a damn good season as a rookie. So now we finally have somebody who's not freaking Jimmy G. <laughs> who could actually sit back there and not freak the F out. And, and get us a first down every once in a while, okay? We actually have some consistency, all right? So I love that move. Great solid move, great veteran to bring in while you uh, allow uh, Aiden, our, our rookie last year, to, to further develop. You allow him to develop at his own pace instead of having to put the whole team on his back. So now Garner Minshew can come in and serve as a bridge player who could possibly turn into more. You don't know. He might be the long-term solution, or he may not. But at least you give the organization time to figure out if this rookie quarterback, Aiden uh, O'Connell, is the guy or if they need to go out and get somebody else in the draft or free agency next year. So great move there on both sides of the ball. It's been an exciting day for me as an Eagles fan and as a, and as a Raiders fan. So let me know what you guys think about those moves. And this is only, I think, day one of free agency, and it's popping off like this. And the Eagles and the Raiders, at least the Raiders, to my knowledge, they also got a lot of money left to spend. A lot of fireworks happening around the league. Uh, the other one that stood out to me, that which is unrelated to my teams, is Kirk Cousins going down to Atlanta. Watch the Falcons. B. John Robinson and them boys down there. And now you have Kirk Cousins. Say what you want about it, but he is a clear upgrade over Ritter and... Uh, Heineke, whatever situation they had going on down there, he's a clear upgrade, and he's going to make them dangerous in that NFC South. All right, Panthers, they're trying to figure out what the, the hell's happening with Bryce Young and why they didn't draft C.J. Stroud. And then you got the Saints. They're, they're solid, but they're starting to break down a little bit. Right? You know, Michael Thomas got released. You have an aging team a little bit. I, I don't know what's going on with them. And then what's the other team in the AFC South? Oh, the Buccaneers. They resigned Baker Mayfield to a $100 million contract. They paid the hell out of him. They gave him some money, boys. So the Buccaneers and now the Falcons. Yo, Wilsey, if, if you watch this video, hey, you got competition with the Falcons now, dude. Um, so that that that's one of the other moves that stuck out to me. But it is not the first big move to be made this offseason, and it won't be the last let me know what you guys think, and um, I'm about to hop on over to YouTube and drop a video for a big fight that's coming up. Check out my video about the Ngannou and Anthony Joshua fight, you know, the second round knockout, big fireworks in that fight, and my prediction video. Listen, I don't have a crystal ball, but your boy got foresight, man. Tell me I didn't call it. Secondly, Conor Ben and Manny Pacquiao will be fighting. I'm going to leave you all with that. And I'm going to talk about that. All right. Deuces.